Uh, this is something that every state should borrow a leaf from. In my own state, we have our own platform where we engaged the people through a stakeholders forum. We had one last week where our governor, that is barely three months in office, decided to convoke the assemblage of the people and then to engage the people and to tell the people the journey so far. I will invite, through the leadership of uh, the Guild of Editors, that uh, you come over to Port Harcourt and see for yourself what the governor of my state, His Excellency, yes, on Wike, is doing. Having said this, Your Excellency, I want to challenge you to do something. It's miraculous that from a pittance of barely 60 million, you could frog leap in your generation of uh, internally generated revenue to 628 million naira. The question this raises in me as a Niger Delta is where are the oil companies, the multinational companies whose exploration activities have rendered this land a virgin, abandoned land, as you said. Where are the so-called seven sisters of the international oil corporations? Shell, Exxon, Mobil, Unlimited, Texaco, and all of them. Where are they? But underneath the belly of this earth, they take away the billions that define the opulence of their countries. I think a time has come when all of us in this region should come together and unite in purpose and in vision to provide a bulwark for defending our natural resources and our rights. It is not by accident that these resources have left other places and found here. Those who postulate this spurious theory that uh, oil started somewhere and started moving, they moved until they left them and came here. What are they doing to stop oil from moving from their place to this place? Let them hold the oil. If it is true that it came from them, let them hold it. And let us hold what we have. That's just, uh, for me, the teaser to my contribution to the very important topic for tonight, which is the change Nigerians desire. What should be the role of the editor? I am, on behalf of my governor, conveying his unreserved apologies for the unavoidable indisposition in making this very important appointment. As I speak with you, it's out of the country and would have loved to be here in person as a mark of respect to what the editors are doing in this country, calling governments and those in the corridors of power to account for how they govern. My take on this is to provoke you in an engagement that should challenge you to look inwards in the way and manner you carry on your task. You have noted in the letter to my governor that by this program you propose to discuss and suggest ways to bring about the change we need in different aspects of our national life. And accordingly, you deliberately choose the theme, Nigeria, the change we need, and the role of the editor. On behalf of my governor, I am gratified that you put on record that in retrospect, his antecedents and interest in projects, policies, and programs that impact positively on the lives of Nigerian citizens, perhaps recommend him to 
be a participant in this program. It is therefore with a great sense of responsibility and honor for this historic privilege to represent my governor that I stand before you to attack in this executive interactive session. I will speak from a somehow somewhat biased position. First, I am in government and a key government official. Secondly, professionally as a lawyer and a former prosecutor for my state. I have had occasions to query the editorial judgment of some of the things that the media churn out, just as His Excellency has said. I recall how a few years ago, during the regime of uh, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, very popular electronic media in Port Harcourt screamed a false headline news item to the fact that the Chopa Bridge, immediately after the University of Port Harcourt, had collapsed. Vehicles, 